Welcome back, guys, here with another episode of The Squeeze with your boy, Juice. What's up? So today, um, we got, we're answering the question for you guys. How do you choose your passion or goal and stick to it? Now, I'm going to do this in about nine little steps for you. Um, But to be honest, it is a long struggle. And it's something that you have to choose to do every single day. So this is just a little tidbit before I get into the major steps, but it's just something that you're definitely going to have to uh, take care of on a consistent basis. And you have to be able to work with yourself in your goals and fruits to making you your best self. So number one, you want to start off by exploring your interest, find out what you find fun, interesting things that you you know, jolt your mind and make you want to explore further and look into things that you wouldn't have beforehand. Um, make sure you explore other activities and hobbies that uh, pique your curiosity. Try new experiences. Uh, read books that you might be interested in. Watch documentaries or even engage in conversations with people you wouldn't usually. You can even speak to people outside of your own norm to discover areas of new interest. Number two, you want to, um, and so with all of that, um, I'm, I know I'm just saying some stuff that's writing off, but you can, working backwards, you can go outside, and I know a lot of people who are extremely successful today that go out and just find places where they can talk to the most successful people in their area. And that, I think, is a world of knowledge and wealth in itself, because if you go out and find people in whatever field that you're passionate about and stuff like that, and just have a conversation with them, you'll find out things that other people who are just working and going towards those goals without asking anybody who's already succeeded in them, things that they have failed at, that they could tell somebody else how to do better. You would also learn other tips and tricks that would have probably taken you years to figure out without anybody else's counsel. So that's just some small little things of speaking to somebody who you know is a little bit more successful in your area Uh, and getting some tips from them. Um, As far as engaging in different conversations, you can, you know, speak to people with different mindsets so it broadens your horizons and things, and touches on things that you might not have known about beforehand. Um, Just a quick example, um, I had a friend of mine uh, go start traveling alone, um, and we both uh, got something out of it when uh, they found out that there was a uh, traveling term called uh, traveling wonderless. Pretty much just what that means is you get to, you travel on your own, you experience the world in a joyous experience on your own without the uh, need for other people to be around. Um, of course, watching documentaries will just allow you to see uh, the truth of our world in a film manner. With that being said, you can also see if you would like to take a step in those worlds. And I mean, it's not to say that even that documentary uh, or filming and even production crew things are what you're passionate about, but it just might find uh, or show you things that you could utilize because a lot of documentaries take from real life situations, of course. Uh, I don't know if there's any documentaries on anything false, but we can find that out later. Reading books will allow you to broaden your horizon immensely because there's just so many ideas packed into all these books nowadays. Um, and reading is the next obsolete thing. So if you aren't reading any books, please take your time to read them now because with everything going digital, you will see the, uh, I mean, let's be honest, you don't see any bookstores and stuff like that. Getting hard copies of books is going to be extremely rare. It's going to be like finding a super rare comic from back in the day. So, and of course, trying new things, you just allow yourself to know what you do and do not like. So that just will help you immensely in general, because without knowing, you're just, you know, leading with an assumption, and that's not good at all. So... 
Into number two, you want to reflect on your values? Consider to yourself what matters most to you, um, what, you've, what you cherish and hold dear to yourself. Reflect on your core values, beliefs, and aspirations, things that you want to work towards, goals that you, you know, foresaw for yourself, even if it's, you know, young as a child. Your passion should align with your values and bring you a sense of purpose and fulfillment. So with that being said, you just need to be able to fulfill yourself in a way that, and it's not about like, so we wrapped up ourselves in all these instant gratifications and stuff like that. And I don't think that we should, you know, give it too much energy because like, it's it's kind of worthless. It's not even kind of, it's really worthless. You fleeting dreams chasing after people who are temporary that's what we we really are pushed to be nowadays everything is so fucking temporary and i just had a conversation early er earlier and it's just like you know the biggest problem i think that we have today in anything it's outside of work is that we obtain things but we don't know how to maintain them Sit there and think about it for a second. Anything you've ever wanted, have you just wanted it and then thought about the next thing that you want? Or have you thought about, damn, this has brought so much value to my life. Let me maintain this. Let me keep it up. Let me make sure that this is great so that, that way I can stay great. I'm just saying, back in the day when you had a horse, it was a lot more cherishing things than they are now because you had another life that you had to take care of to get you from point A to point B. Nowadays, you just get a car. If that's, that thing is, you know, malfunctioning, guess what? I got money. I'll buy another one. You really have to think about the mindsets that you put yourself in, especially since we're talking about sticking and choosing a passion. Because if you're thinking on a weird level or I, I say weird, but on a fleeting level, and that just means that you things come and go as they please, then how can you expect to find your passion and then be able to stick to it? Because then you'll be looking for the next passion. You accomplished it. But to sustain yourself, you got to upkeep yourself. So you need to know what works and how to keep it working. You know? So let's go into number three, because I think that this is a, a good one. And I'm going to change it a little bit because I only put identifying your strengths. But let's talk about identifying your strengths and weaknesses. Now, when I was but a wee child, or as my man Black Dynamite likes to say, when I was a children, it, it was something that we did probably as early as six to seven years old. You identified what you were good at and what you weren't. And of course, back then, it was a lot less um, pandering for sure. Um, and that just means, you know, sugarcoating and holding hands. But it was a lot of telling you that you, um, you know, even if you didn't know, it was okay which I don't agree with now because you should know your weaknesses and that's what the issue was. And I mean, yes, you might not take your time and identify those things, but you know what you're not great at. You see what, you know, other people might excel at and what things that you might fall behind. And only reason I say this in depth is because when knowing your both your strengths and your weaknesses, you make yourself a much better well-rounded person. On top of that, you can establish boundaries for yourself that you would not have in the I mean, in the past. For example, if you know you're not the greatest speller and things like that, then of course you can align yourself with more technologies like a chat GPT or a Grammarly and stuff to make sure that your writing is up to par. Um, but it's just other little things. Like if you have a short temper, you know, when to, you know, remove yourself from certain situations, but you do need to take account of yourself. And a lot of people don't do that any longer because it's just like, deal with me how I am. What? I don't understand why anybody thinks that somebody should deal with them as they are. You should try to be the best person you are so that when people do deal with you, that you are harmonious, that you are a blessing, that you are a gift to their life. Not just deal with me as I am. If you don't like me, you don't like me. And I mean, you're not built to be liked by everybody. But be the best version of yourself so that nobody is just out here shit-talking you just for the sake of it. At least that's how I was raised. And I would hope that you got enough good, you know, 
sense in you to be want and need that in your life more than you want the drama and the foolishness. But I mean, we know what makes the bucks. But just make yourself right. You know what I'm saying? We don't want to make, you know what I'm saying? Okay, so uh, back to identifying your strengths and weaknesses. You need to consider, consider uh, activities where you excel and enjoy the most because those will just give you avenues of things that you can become passionate about that don't take too much energy or too much extra to allow you to be comfortable in that space. So if you're unfamiliar with working out, but you like to, you know, per se, go to the pool and stuff like that, you just got to up the frequency of going to the pool. And then make a little, you know, note that while you're sitting there enjoying the pool, you make it a little bit of a workout, you know, do some sit-ups. And you can do a lot at the pool, actually. I don't know if there's anybody that needs to know, but if it's just simply going to the pool, you can do a bunch and still be happy. Um, passion often emerges when you engage in something that leverages your natural abilities and brings out your best. So make sure when you're doing your explorations that you're finding the things that, you know, bring you to your maximum, uh, both happiness and give you your, the best range of your natural abilities. Okay. This one right here, number four, is going to be really key. And a lot of people are going to be like, ah, I don't want to do that. Listen, if I tell you nothing more, number four is probably one of the most pivotal. You need to be okay with trial and error. There are some things you are going to try and you are going to fail at. It's okay. Even if you don't like it, it's okay. Um, don't be afraid to try different things, uh, experiment with various interests. Uh, it's normal to go through a trial process and uh, an error to find what resonates with you. Treat every experience as an opportunity to learn and grow. The reason why this is important, with any journey, you're going to stumble, you might fall, you might crash on your damn face. But the more that you get up, the closer and closer you will be to obtaining whatever it is that you wish. And nobody will be able to stop you but you. So be more Assertive, be more aggressive, be more intensive than you've ever been when you are seeking your passion for you. Now, I say all of that. I'm going to give you a good example. Self, okay? Um, before I started this page and before you got to see my lovely face and the scruff and the scruff that I got going on, I was a almost 300 pound man i'm probably about 20 pounds away from being 300 pounds now for the last year and a half now i'll say a year and a half i i, I lost the weight in probably a year i lost about 138 pounds within that first year never changed my diet i only changed the consistency of how much i worked out because i never wanted to be miserable in my path to getting to the best version of myself and i believe that diets make you miserable and if you're miserable you can't strive towards per, you know being better even being good in general because you need to have a good sense of inner happiness now i'm not saying that diets don't work for people i'm just saying that you can do what you want to do and still get what you want to get but you just have to change certain things now, that might mean that some things might be hard because believe me, it was days where I really fucking would not want to work out. I wouldn't even want to get up. I would be midway in a workout and be like, God, this is not over yet. Probably be a couple seconds in and just be like, dang, I, I didn't know I was going to be sweating like this, you know? But listen, I would get myself up every day and make sure it happened. I had a pull up bar. It was one of those kind of flimsy ones, and we, we can get into that another time. But uh, it was one of those ones that, you know, you kind of apply pressure to uh, two, two beams. And it worked well for a few months. Then I got up there, and I was really starting to get into pull-ups really good. Probably, you know, get into 20 set reps. The mother damn effer wanted to fall on me. 
And yes, it fell slap on my nose. And I thought I had broke this damn thing. But guess what happened? I talked to some friends who were in who are nurses, and I got I got it checked a little bit. Um, but I waited about a few minutes and I got back to working out because I was like, I have goals, and there's no way in hell a little bit of blood is gonna stop me. There are times that I have literally having low blood pressure, blacked out from jumping up, and I kept running. And I know you're probably like, what in the hell? This guy's crazy. No. I'm passionate. Um, number five is when you're having that little itch at the back of the head, that thought in the center of your mind, follow it. So number five is follow your curiosity. Pay attention to the genuine sparks of interest that you find, things that fuel your motivation and pique your, uh, your top interests. When you are genuinely interested in something, you are more likely to stay and be committed to it in the long run. Allow yourself to dive deeper into subjects that capture your attention. And this doesn't apply to just to people. Because I know that a lot of people might hear that and be like, dang, I'm thinking about this person in my head. Okay, that's fine. I'm not saying that you can't do that. But correlated with something else that find, you find a passion about. Things that you find passionate. Events. Things that you know that get your blood boiling. If you're a sports fan, what team is it? What can you do to report on that team? Or Because that's something that you can do. You can start talking about the things that you really fucking love, man. Like, I got a boy. Can't stand him. Cowboys fan, though. You know what I'm saying? I'm talking about the Cowboys. I can't stand That's my homeboy. I definitely can stand him. That's my bro. Um, but that man talks about him. I could care less. But I let that man speak because, hey, listen. If anything, I can learn something from that man even though I don't care about those cowboys. And of course, uh, hopefully I ain't getting too much flack out here. And if anybody in the in the comments and stuff that's watching is a Cowboys fan, we, uh, look, we love you guys. There's no animosity. I'm not a Redskins or whatever the, the fuck their name is now uh fan either. So it's not like I'm bagging you guys. It's just you you're a weird community in general. This confusing and uh most of you guys are out of place. I don't know I, I don't think I've ever met an at-home Texas fan that's a Cowboys fan. But, you know, I haven't been to Texas too many times, so. My favorite, and probably you guys will, you know, take it however you, you like, because um, I'm a structured individual. But number seven is to, excuse me, I, I don't jumped. We're not at number seven, guys. But the most imp one of the most important, the one that I think is probably one of the greatest, is our number six. And that's because I'm a goal-oriented person. But you want to set goals and take action. If your goal is to lose weight, you need to set out a 90-day plan at minimum. You know what I'm saying? Because why... This is this is the best way I can say it. If you've gotten a new job and you expressed and gotten done everything to the T for a new job, why can't you take your time and do 90 days for yourself to make sure you're at least taking the first step in becoming the best version of yourself? Because if you can do it for strangers and you can't do it for you, you have a warped mentality. And that's just me thinking. Um, But you need to identify these passions that you have found you want to set a specific achievable goal so smaller goals guys smaller micro goals right again back to the working out thing because this is what i started the topic off on right i say 90 days but you start off small get a week make sure you get through that week and once you feel good with that week do another one you know what i mean and just be consistently compiled up because once you get through Four weeks, you did a month. You did, already did one month. Do four more. I mean, do four more. You just did 60% of those 90 days. Do one more, you're fucking done. And then you just got results. 
results. Most people don't get results because they don't even try in the first place. You know? So to get past all of that, set small goals, embrace them, be be very so this is be grateful for the small things that you do accomplish too oh excuse me i got a little gas but you want to break down break them down into small little milestones create a plan that you that works you towards them making sure you take consistent action even in small increments to help maintain the momentum and built build that expertise so all it all is just keeping up with it because it takes 90 days to build a good habit that's also why i say give yourself 90 days if you're going to start working out because once you start it then you're going to feel like okay well i don't know what my life is without it once you get to that 90 days now again it's going to be a struggle but if they if they, if i lied and told you it wasn't you probably would come back and be like this guy he doesn't he doesn't do his fucking job well he just says anything and expects us to believe it Number eight, uh, I keep skipping numbers, guys, and I apologize to you guys for that. Um, Number seven, it definitely correlates right after that. You want to embrace your challenges and try to, uh, you know, push past them. So while pursuing your passions, and this is where coming, uh, going back and looking at your weaknesses, if you are a procrastinator and stuff like that, you need to think about the challenges and stuff that will come with the uh, passion that you are seeking or stuff like that, know the setbacks and things that may come with it and just plan for those. Because I, I think it's the best thing in the, the world is to have a good plan and to execute it. Now, a lot of people will be like, well, how can I plan for everything? Believe me, you can plan for damn near anything. You just have to put your mind to it. And I'm just saying like this, and I think this is one of the better analogies. Now, this is not the only analogy you have to think about. But if there was somebody that told you, I just don't like you. And, you know, I think it would be rude to whoop your ass right now. So a month from now, I'm going to come to you, don't care where it is, and I'm just going to punch you in the fucking face. Now, you can choose to be like, ah, okay, I'm just going to avoid you. A month from now. Put it in your calendar to never leave your house, right? Let's say they didn't know where you live, right? So you don't really have any place to hide. Let's just make it like that. They know everywhere you could possibly hide. Are you going to sit there and cower in your room for that month time? Or will you go out and learn how to either take a punch, dodge a punch, block a punch, or punch back? You tell me down in the comments below because I just am really curious. So. And if you're liking this, please like and comment. Um, we're trying to bring more and more videos to you guys. And it'll, it'll be uh, all the stuff that you will need to bring your life up. Um, you want to develop a resilience and the ability to overcome obstacles. So stay focused on your long-term girl goals and push, persevere through the ups and downs. Um, and that will definitely just make you... See, so all of these things, if you take all of these things in a in smaller in smaller steps, it just changes the type of person that you become. If you have if implement even all seven of these things, you will be, believe me, you'll be in the top 30 percentile of people. And those are damn near, you know, multi, some of them are multimillionaires, not all of them, but those are millionaires. Um, you also, so number eight, now we're getting to the now good and nitty gritty. Number eight, you want to surround yourself with both supportive and, uh, uh, excuse me, go oriented and um, success minded people. You want to, so best quote I ever heard from Kevin Samuels, your network is your net worth. Um, and you want to seek out a supportive network of friends, mentors, or other like-minded individuals who share your um, your similar interests or passions, because both they will be able to help you charge your ideas, meaning they will be able to help you look at things in a more rounded, like 360 type of way. 
Um, they can provide you guidance, inspiration, accountability, and they will just make your journey that much more enjoyable and fulfilling. Because once you do things in a group, you just feel like you're not doing it alone. And this world makes it so that we always want to be on this solo mindset, but you need to build a proper community to build your proper passions, make your things that you want work because you aren't in it alone. There's somebody somewhere helping you in some way, shape, or form, and you need to be grateful for those people that provide any type of assistance for you. Not to say to overly bend backwards and pay them top dollar, not to say that they don't deserve it either, but you need to gauge everything because, again, you have to be doing for yourself, but then you want to bring the right people in, you know? And another quote that just, you know, and I think you should take this even better because I might not be perfect. All the answers that I have here might not be for you, but take whatever I have to say with a grain of salt, leave what works. I mean, take what works and leave the rest, man. Don't be sitting around fucking bullshitting on things that don't work for you. It's plenty of things that I've heard in my life that I wish I could, didn't waste my time on. And even better, I know that a lot of people can relate with this because, you know, parents and, you know, we as are your children, we love you, but you see us in a different light. You see us in what you would imagine us doing, and we see ourselves in what we want us to do. So it's been times where I had a class with my own parents because they can't see the vision that I have for myself. But that doesn't mean that I couldn't strive to be the best person that I wanted to be. It's just that I had to butt heads with them and tell them that you need to back off a little bit so that, that way I can fulfill the passions in my life that I need for myself. Because if I stick around and do everything that you want me to do, granted, I may be successful, I might have a stable life, but I will never be as happy as I want to be. And last but not least, our number nine, you want to stay open-minded and adaptable. Being flexible will be the key to anything. If you take a hit, if you fail, you want to look at your failure, see what didn't work in it, and then try again. You know, uh, as you progress, you want to remain open to new possibilities and opportunities. Your passion may evolve or lead you to unexpected directions entirely. So that means that you might even switch up altogether. Um, but embrace the chance to explore different fashions of your passion and adapt as necessary. Um, even with this whole thing, I, I had expected it to you know, just be something I did on the weekends and stuff like that. But it's definitely ramping up. I was doing this just on an iPhone camera. We have ramped up to my DSLR now. Um, I, I do professional photography. If you're also looking out for some stuff like that, hit me up on IG at Juicy Shots. Um, I'm in the DMV area, so I can help you if you're in that location. I do travel. I've traveled to other states to do photography and um, shoots and stuff like that. Uh, but now I'm kind of ramping that down, not to say that the business isn't open, because passion has taken me in a different direction. And to bring all this lovely information and advice and helpful things to you guys here, so if you're liking what you're seeing, this is The Squeeze, guys. I'm your host, Juice. Um, please like down below. If you're seeing us on YouTube, they they congratulate you with fireworks. So if you're early to the party, you know, 4th of July is right around the corner, and you'll get some early fireworks. So, you know, guys, closing out, I want to say, remember, sticking to, your, sticking to a passion is a continuous process. It takes time. It takes exploration, self Reflection to uncover what truly en enthusiasm, I mean, what truly ignites your enthusiasm. Be very patient with yourself. Be considerate. Enjoy the journey and be willing to adjust the course as needed. And you got this. Again, this is your boy Juice. Peace.